young men are not doing well in the modern world. Young men have the highest rates of homelessness, suicide, and they're often very lonely. And people put forward a lot of explanations as to why this might be, but I think it all boils down to most men not having hope for their futures. You know, for most of history, if you were a man, you could reasonably hope to get a decent job, find a wife, and start a family. But the structure of modern society makes it really hard for the average man to do these things. We could talk about how bad the economy is in general in terms of, like, wages and stuff, and that's valid, but it's especially hard for men, because in many ways, school is rigged against boys. The public education system often favors feminine traits, like being neat, organized, quiet, and following directions, and it often punishes more masculine traits, like being loud, energetic, and creative. So men start off at a disadvantage, but even if they do manage to get a good job, then there's the problem of not being able to find a wife. Because the traditional family structure has been replaced with hookup culture, so monogamy has been replaced with a sort of polygamy in hookup culture almost. We're almost reverting to prehistoric times where a few alpha males get all the women, have all the hookups, leaving the majority of other men kind of sexually frustrated. And historically speaking, it's really dangerous when you have a large population of sexually frustrated and unemployed men who don't really have any purpose or direction in life. That could lead to a big social crisis, and I know none of us want that, so this needs to change soon. And part of it is also the decline of religion has caused the decline of traditional family structures and traditional communities. It used to be that the church was the lifeblood of everyone's community. Like, the mainline church, whether Protestant or Catholic, in the center of any given town was the, the community center, and it used to be really rare for someone to not have community, because everyone went to church, and everyone's community was centered around the church. But now that religion has declined, it's become a lot more common for people to have no friends. Like, just, just ask any old person, it used to be a complete anomaly for someone to have no friends. That used to be, like, a weird thing. But now, it's really common for people, especially men, to have no friends. Or if they have friends, it's like not any sort of intimate, long-term connection. Like, a lot of people have their friend groups on, like, Discord. A lot of men who are gamers and stuff. But those, thing, those things would don't last. We know those don't last. So, there are three ways in which society prevents men from revolting against the way things are. Three ways in which society... Uh, the powers that be, prevent men from challenging the status quo. I call it MVP, and that stands for Marijuana, Video Games, and Pornography. So marijuana is the classic staple drug of Generation Z. It has basically replaced tobacco as the most common substance people use. And what marijuana is famous for is making people passive. People who are stoned have no motivation to do anything. You know, one of, my, uh, one of my relatives is a psychologist who deals with a lot of people who are addicted to marijuana, and those people have no motivation. Even if, even if they're not, like, addicted per se, it still affects them in that it destroys their motivation. So I think one of the reasons that society is promoting marijuana as opposed to tobacco is because marijuana really does make men passive. It makes men not care about anything. And the nihilism that marijuana causes really does fit with the spirit of Gen Z, the sort of nihilistic, nothing matters, apathetic spirit. But it really does match the vibe of Gen Z, and in some ways, it's, I think it's like a coping mechanism for the reality that many people in Gen Z have no purpose in their lives. So smoking weed just kind of helps them forget about it all. But if we're to be good Christian men, we can't simply sit back and be apathetic and just complain about the way things are, we need to do something. So we need to stand up against marijuana usage. That's a big thing. The second thing is video games. And it's kind of weird that I'm telling you this while I'm playing a video game. So video games in general are not bad per se. It's video game addiction that is bad. Video games are good in moderation. I close the server on Sundays so people can go to church. Video game addiction is a real problem among a lot of men, and the media doesn't talk about it as much as it should, because men completely waste their lives and play video games instead of socializing or getting a job and stuff. But in many ways, like I said, it's a vicious cycle, because it is hard for a lot of men to achieve anything, and video games are kind of a distraction from that reality, so I, I get it, but then it just makes things worse. It's a vicious cycle. Part of the reason why video games sort of pacify men and prevent them from challenging the status quo is because video games can be a form of escapism. 
uh, video games satisfy men's desire for adventure, so they don't seek adventure in the real world. That's why video games can be fun, can be a fun form of socializing, but they shouldn't be a substitute for the real world. Like, on this Minecraft server, we all build churches in Minecraft, but I'm always very clear that this is not a substitute for going to church in real life, and I always encourage people, if you're building a church on this server, you need to go to church in real life, because I don't want Minecraft to replace real life. But for many young men, video games do replace real life. All men have a desire for adventure. The, the story Lord of the Rings really exemplifies this, where even people addicted to a comfortable lifestyle, like most men in Gen Z, have this innate desire for adventure. It's a good masculine trait to crave adventure, no matter what the public schools tell you. The public schools completely dissuade all forms of adventurousness, and, and when I was in public school, they told us, whenever it snowed, not to touch the snow. Like, not even not to fight with the snow. We couldn't touch the snow. No one ever explained why that was, but it's men are basically taught to be feminine from a, from a young age and taught to hate their masculinity. And I'm not into like self love or anything either. That's self love is anti Christian. I have a video on that. But men still need to embrace their God given masculinity. There's a good way to do it and a bad way to do it. But if we're if men are told that masculinity is toxic, that really that really does not help. And a lot of men, especially those like me who went to public school, are taught that. So, but the healthy way to live out masculinity is to have productive adventures in the real world, not simply wasting our adventure on video games. And the third thing, the third way that men are kept passive is pornography. A lot of times men want adventure so that either consciously or subconsciously they can impress women and find a mate. That's just how we evolved to think. But in the modern world, Pornography has replaced love in many cases, and many men cannot find a partner, so they turn to pornography to sort of um, numb the pain, but that only makes it even harder for them to find someone. That even makes it even harder to have relationships. And pornography doesn't just, does, doesn't just affect men, because the pornification of society affects women as well. A greater number of women are becoming promiscuous and starting things like an OnlyFans. And men watching porn, men being addicted to porn, pressures women to act like women in porn act, which is completely unnatural and really unhealthy and dangerous for women, but it's what women are pressured into. So porn hurts men and women. But in this video, I'm talking about men. And we could shame all day. We could shame the women who start OnlyFans pages. But who is it that is supplying the demand for these OnlyFans pages? I'll give you a hint. It's not women, and I don't believe there's more than two genders. It's mostly men that are creating the demand for this porn culture, so we can't blame the ladies for it. Now, like I said, this is also kind of a vicious cycle. Men can't find a mate, so they turn to pornography, but that sort of makes women more promiscuous, and then it, it's, it, the cycle repeats, and then it makes even fewer men find good, healthy relationships. So if men are to take a stand against the status quo, first we need to fix ourselves, not be addicted to porn, not smoke weed, and not be addicted to video games. That is the big thing. But what can we do about it? Now, I'm not the first person to realize that there is a masculinity crisis. The most famous person who probably comes to mind is Jordan Peterson. He talks about this all the time. He's a psychologist and has become like a celebrity who talks about young men's problems that people have often ignored. He's really filling a void, a void um, that the uh, psychologists and the church, honestly, has left not addressing young men's problems. My issue with Jordan Peterson and his crowd is they try to seek secular solutions to what really is a spiritual problem. Historically, the social problems, like deeply rooted social problems, can only really be solved by the church. It's really important that the church is at the forefront of solving all of these problems because of how socially important the church has always been. The church is the bedrock of society. Back when everyone had communities, the center of community was the church. Like I said, it's an anomaly. It used to be an anomaly back when everyone went to church for people to be lonely the way a lot of modern men are very lonely. So we need to revive the churches. And not just any churches. We need to revive the churches that are the, the centers of communities like your old historic mainline church at the center of most towns. Those, oh, oops, okay, I'm gonna, those are the community centers. Those are the places we need to revive. It's very important that we do that. Now, the problem is a lot of men don't want to go to these places because these places aren't necessarily the most friendly environments for men, and that's understandable, but it's not a masculine thing to do to simply complain about the way things are or to expect someone else to solve your problems for you. 
we could point fingers all day and talk about who's at fault for various environments not being very friendly to masculinity. But like I said, it's not a masculine or a manly thing to blame other people for your problems. Men don't seek out safe spaces. Men conquer things. So a lot of men don't go to church because churches aren't the most masculine environments. Even if there's men running the church, the, ser the sermons are kind of soft, fluffy, and feminine. But that doesn't mean, that's not an excuse to not go to church. What that does mean is we need to get more involved in our churches, more involved in our communities to make them more masculine and masculine-friendly environments. Like I said, if, if you're a man and you won't go to church because it's not a friendly place for you, that's not a masculine trait. It's not masculine to seek out a safe space, like I said. So if men are to change things, we need to get involved. Evil persists when good men do nothing. Uh, evil is allowed to fester, and evil really is festering in our society when men are passive. And that's why the powers that be want men to be passive so much. That's why they're promoting MVP. That's why they're promoting marijuana, video games, and pornography. So we need to not be passive. If you're not involved in your local church, you need to get involved in your local church and get involved in your uh, community in other ways. But of course, we can't do it alone. Men often fly solo. Uh, men are like, I, sometimes I've said women are like dogs and men are like cats because women tend to think in packs, tend to have like a pack mentality, and men tend to think solo. But the reason like women are often behind a lot of social justice movements is because women know how to create a mob and men are often act individually so they, they can't really band together. So it's important that you check in on your male friends. Check in to make sure they're okay. This is something that men aren't always the best at doing. And it's, it's a good thing that men are good at controlling their emotions. I'm not saying men need to be more emotional because, you know, I'll often find feminists say, oh, men need to stop acting so masculine because that's what's hurting their mental health. No, what's hurting men is a society that's completely rigged against them. But like I said, it's not our, it's not our job to complain about the way things are. If men are really masculine, they can change it themselves. They don't need to stand around and demand someone else fix it for them. Like I said, that's not a masculine thing to do. But it's still important that men talk to each other about their problems. If you have male friends, and I'm sure most of you do, you need to check in on them. Just see if they're doing okay. And even if they're not, make sure that you care, make sure that they know you care about them. That'll mean a lot to them. Even just like a, a random guy friend right now, after this video, a random guy friend that you haven't talked to in a while, just text him and say, just how you doing? Just checking in on how you doing, bro. And there's nothing unmasculine about doing that. Is there? No, of course not. Men need to care about each other. And that's why I love the, the Lord of the Rings so much. Tim Keller, God bless his soul, talks about this a lot. Of course, in the Lord of the Rings movies, there's, you know, romance and stuff. But the Lord of the Rings books talk about how the best love is sometimes not romantic love, it's friendship. Most of the characters in Lord of the Rings are men, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, not because all stories need to have all male characters, but because it exemplifies the love of male friendships that often get ignored. There's something really great about men going on adventures together. That's why it's going to be an adventure to revive the local churches, and many friendships will be made along the way. And that's why the Boy Scouts were so important for generations of young men. It's literally young boys going on adventures in the wilderness and learning good values along the way. So of course the left had to target the Boy Scouts because they target everything that's culturally important. But I was a Boy Scout, I'm an Eagle Scout, I still think those principles need to be revived. Like, it used to be that men would rely on their wives for emotional support, but I already explained why that's not happening today. So yeah, check in on your male friends. But also, men need to band together and start recreating these communities that have been lost. And these communities need to start in the church and then just spread outward from there. The church, like I said, it's the bedrock of society. If we are to improve society, we need to start with the church. So band together with your male friends um, and start going back to church. Start reviving these old mainstream churches that have been dormant for so long and then we can start rebuilding the fabric of society that has been destroyed by modernism. So the only hope for young men is to revive religious communities, which can only happen if men take leadership. I'm going to put maps in the description of this video for you to find churches if you don't know a church to go to, if you don't know a place to start. Start going this Sunday and start making connections. Society is going to keep going in the direction that it's going in. Things are going to keep getting worse for men unless there is some drastic and dramatic change. 
Men need to stand up and revolt against the status quo. And we revolt by going back to church, by doing what they don't want us to do. They don't want us to form communities. They don't want us to band together. And they don't want us to have hope. They just want to keep us passive. And we can't do that. And we can't keep flying solo and numbing our senses, numbing our troubles with MVP. It's funny, I know of a lot of men who are conservative, in quotes, but they're not religious. For them, conservatism is just about what they're against. And trust me, there is a lot of stuff to be against. I know that wokeness and feminism and social justice is not a friendly environment for men. But conservatism never wins if it's only about what it's against. We need to be for something. And what I am for is creating these friendly religious communities where men can start families. And once men do take leadership in this, women are going to see this and women are going to get on board. If men are complaining about women not having traditional values, men need to adopt some traditional values. And when they do, women will follow. And men becoming more traditional does help women as well. Even if they don't admit it, most women want men who can lead a family for them. But feminism tells them otherwise, so they just go along with the crowd. But we don't need to listen to what they're saying. We just need to do it our own way. And then once they do, once they see that, they're going to follow. Again, it's not a masculine thing to demand other people change for you. You need to make the change and then people are going to follow. So three things you should do right after watching this video. Clean your room, text your friends, and go to church this Sunday.